It's homework time, yes! Hap, hap, happy! Homework time is here yet again. Lesson 12! Ah, let's start off in the right way. Jot your name down at the top of your paper. I'll write my name, you write yours. And don't forget, today's date. I'll write today, you write the actual date. Our instructions. For number one, complete the number sentence, which is down here, uh, by expressing each part using hundredths. So where there be tenths, we express it as hundredths kind of thing. Model using the place value chart as shown in part A. So this one they did for us. Look at that cute little tenth. Oh, it's so cute. All right, and then we had, so we start off with one tenth and eight hundredths. See, one tenth, eight hundredths. And so, hey, how can you think of this? Well, that tenth, that dime, is ten pennies, right? That tenth is ten hundredths. We see that, and I just want to show you. I want to prove to you, because you know equivalent fractions. If I wanted to go from tenths to hundredths, well, ten times what is a hundred? Ten, right? And so you remember this from equivalent fractions. So if I multiply one-tenth by ten-tenths, I'm multiplying by a value of one. I'm changing the form, but not the value of the one-tenth. So one-tenth times ten-tenths, also known as one-tenth times one, not changing its value, is, well, 1 times 10 is 10. I just wanted to prove that to you so you could see. And if you also think a dime is 10 pennies. So 1 tenth and 8 hundredths is simply, well, what do we have now in hundredths? 18 hundredths. Okay, so now we thoroughly understand that one, and we can do B and C much more efficiently. Let's do it. Well, all right, and you know, I have to say they were a little merciful here. We don't have to do quite so much of the place value drawing of dots and disks and dashes and doodads. Uh, so look here, we're starting with two tenths, okay? And I'm going to make these two tenths like that, like little eyeballs looking at you. Um, and then we have three hundredths, cool. Two, three. Now, each of these tenths, we're going to decompose as hundredths. Okay, so we have two tenths, three hundredths. That's what we're starting with here. All right, so this tenth we're going to decompose as ten hundredths. This dime we're going to change in for ten pennies. So, and we do rows of five as our custom is. One, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five, make ten. And this dime as well, I'm going to change in for ten pennies. This tenth I'm going to decompose into hundredths. And again, it is ten hundredths. We already proved that in 1a. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Beautiful. So now how many hundredths do I have? 10, 20, and 3 make 23. That's it. All right. So now here, this one's even easier. We have 1 tenth. And then we have 14 hundredths, which is kind of a head scratcher there. I don't know why they put it that way, because what this really would be is if, I'll write it out like this. If you said, hey, I have 1 tenth and plus, and I have 14 hundredths, which would be written as that, I mean, what do you really have here? I'll place a zero here so you can see what I'm doing more easily. Um, yeah, you know, I have 24, right? But So I don't see why they put the 14 there, but heck, that's what we'll draw. One, two, three, four, I'll do those there, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's my 14 hundredths, okay? And now this tenth, I'm going to bring over here, decompose as hundredths. This dime, I'll change in for ten pennies. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So that gives me, yeah, I already figured it out, 24 hundredths. There we go. Zingo, zango. Let's go on. It's coffee time. Elixir of the gods, as they say. We're going to solve by converting all add-ins, which are numbers you're adding, to hundredths before solving. So let's see what that actually looks like. So here, we have one-tenth plus pl 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 two hundredths. The two hundredths are already hundredths. Okay, so we'll just kind of let that be. As you see here, they are two hundredths. Great. But that one-tenth, well, we just did this. We know that one-tenth is ten hundredths plus two hundredths is twelve hundredths. Now look, does my answer make sense? Does your answer make well, look at it. A dime, one dime, and two pennies, is that 12 cents? It sure is. Ooh, it makes sense. But even look at it this way in terms of money as well. If I had four dimes and 11 pennies, do the math, 
You see how it's 51 cents? Four dimes is 40 cents, and 11 cents in pennies, 40 and 11 make 51. But watch what happens. Watch the mathematics here. Four tenths is 40 hundredths. We see that, right? Those four dimes are 40 cents. We could, we could go back and do like we did in 1A and do the equivalent fractions on it, but I think you get it. And then we have 11 hundredths. They're already expressed as hundredths. Add those up, we get 51 hundredths, just like we knew. 8 tenths plus 25 hundredths. All right, so let's look at the 8 tenths. 8 tenths is how many hundredths? 8 dimes is how many cents? How many pennies? How many cents? It's 80 hundredths. 8 tenths is 80 hundredths. 25 hundredths is 25 hundredths. Now, when you put them together, 80 and 25, well, you could do this kind of in two steps mentally. That 20 from the 25 makes a nice juicy 100 hundredths, which we know is one whole, and then 5, so 100 five hundredths, and it's not asking us to put it into any other form. We just leave it like that. And here we have something similar with 43 hundredths. Oh, see, they're giving us the hundredths first. See, woo, switching it up. 43 hundredths plus six tenths, well, six tenths is how many hundredths? Six times is 60 cents. It is 60 hundredths. You can see again here, as I said, this one's kind of similar, that 40 and 60 make 100 with three more, 103 hundredths. That's it. Let's move on. Well, I hope you're having at least half as much fun as I am doing this stuff. I think this whole decimals unit here has just been a blast. It's been like math party. Look, find the sum. Woo! Raise your hands in the sum. What? Convert tenths to hundredths as needed? As needed. Write your answer as a decimal. Yeah. So what, what we're doing here, I'll explain why we're doing it this way. Because what we want you to see is that when you're adding decimals, it's the same thing as adding fractions, which you already know how to do. You already know how to do this. That's why the fractions unit is 41 lessons, and the decimals unit, the module here, is only 16 lessons, because everything you're learning about decimals, you already learned with fractions. That's why, even though you're learning decimals, you're looking at fractions. It's the same thing! Look at this three tenths. Watch, I'm going to write this as, I'm going to write the whole thing as a decimal here. Um, well, let me write it first as a fraction to show you what's going on. Three tenths is, well, I want to convert tenths to hundredths. Three tenths is 30 hundredths, right? And then I, that seven hundredths is already in hundredths forms. Uh, so 30 hundredths and seven hundredths is 37 hundredths. Now watch, you can redo, I'm going to redo the whole thing as a decimal. So that's three tenths. This is fun for me. And seven hundredths, that's what seven hundredths looks like, right? Yeah, that's the same thing as, I'm going to put them both in hundredths. That's the same thing as thirty hundredths and seven hundredths. Notice what I wrote below. Yeah, it's the same thing. Upstairs, downstairs, everywhere. And so that, as a decimal, is thirty-seven hundredths. I'll make this look more like a zero and less like a Hershey kiss. Okay, you see how these... Say the I would read these the same way. Three tenths plus seven hundredths equals thirty hundredths plus seven hundredths equals thirty-seven hundredths. I would read those the same way. If I just read those out loud and you weren't looking at it, you wouldn't know if I was talking fractions or decimals. They're the same thing. All right, so now we can cruise through the rest of these. So sixteen hundredths is already in hundredths. We can just leave as is. But the five tenths we want to express it as hundredths to make the math a little easier here. So five tenths is yes. We don't have to pretend you don't know. It's 50 hundredths. You know that. 16 and 50, you add those up. Okay, that gives us 66 hundredths, which we can write as a decimal as, what does that look like as a decimal? 0 0.66. And one way I tell you to check yourself is when you read the number 66 hundredths, am I in the hundredths place when I say 66 and that's the hundredths place? Yes. So it's right. All right, so again, 5 tenths, we already know, is 50 hundredths. We just did that. And 40 hundredths. Well, 50 and 40, y'all, is 90 hundredths. Now, this one we can do a little bit extra with here. Watch. 90 hundredths we can write as a decimal as like that, right? 90 hundredths. But we also know that this would be 90 cents is 9 dimes, right? 90 hundredths equals 9 tenths. Yes, so I can also write it this way. 
just to be aware of that, cognizant of that factoid. So 20 hundredths is already hundredths here, but the eight, hun uh, eight tenths rather, ooh, zip, plus, um, the eight tenths we can express as hundredths as, okay, eight tenths equals 80 hundredths. Sometimes I go too fast for my own good. And this one's kind of interesting because 20 and 80, you know, make, yeah, 100. So we have 100 hundredths. Now watch, this is kind of interesting. You know that's equal to one whole, but watch. I'm going to write 100 such that it ends in the hundredths place. Watch. 100. Am I in the hundredths place? I am. Math makes sense. I wish all of life made so much sense. Let's go on to number four. Well, number four looks like more of the same, but there is a key difference, which I'll tell you right off that um, in the last one, all of the sums, all the answers were equal to or less than one. And now in number four, they're all greater than one. Okay, so all of these will be greater than one. Watch how it works. So we'll solve and write our answers as a decimal. So five tenths, we just did this twice. We already know expressed as hundredths is 50 hundredths. And then we have 53 hundredths. Sorry, my writing's getting a little sloppy. I'll slow down a bit. Um, so 50 and 53, got that? 103. And now we're talking about hundredths. So now I want to show you how to, how to write these, okay? This is just kind of Ms. McGrath's method. So look, here's the ones place. There's a decimal point, tenths and hundredths. I'm going to write 103 such that it ends where? In the hundredths place. So 103, am I in the hundredths place? Yes, yes. Because if I were writing 103 tenths, which is kind of weird, but if I were, it would end in the tenths place. If I were writing 103, it would end in the ones place. If I were writing 103 thousands, like thousands, it would end in the thousands place, right? So that's, that's a way to help you. And this, this is no trick or, or backdoor thing. This is just math sense. Let's do the next one. 27 hundredths is already in hundredths. Great. But we are adding it to 8 tenths, which we want to express as hundredths. Eight. Ghosts. All right. So 8 tenths is how many hundredths? 80 hundredths. 27 and 80, well, we can see 20 and 80 make 100, and then 7 more, 107. Break down the addition in your head that way. And again, look, I'm going to make the place values you. Ones, tenths, hundredths. I'm going to write 107 such that it ends in the hundredths place because I have hundredths here. 107, where am I? Hundredths place. All right, let's look at the next one. Four tenths is how many hundredths? We're getting good at this. Yeah, we know that's 40 hundredths. You can't fool us, Eureka. All right, and then 78 hundredths. Now, there's a couple ways of doing this. What actually happens in my head, I'll tell you honestly, I look at that 40, and I think, well, 7 and 4 make 11. Do you see that? Or you might say, okay, well, I could take 30 from this, add it to the 78 to get 108, and then that 10 more is 118. Or you might just write it out, 78 plus 40, and do the math in that way. Different ways of approaching it. Uh, so 118 is what you end up with, and we're talking about hundredths. Now, again, I'm going to do this one more time for you here, or maybe two more times. Look, there are my place value. Ones, decimal point, tenths, hundredths. 118 what, Ed? 118 hundredths is what we're talking about, Ed. So I'm going to write 118 such that it ends in the hundredths place. That's how I know I have 118 hundredths. I could also, by the way, approach this as a, from a mixed number standpoint and say, how many hundreds in 118? Well, there's one with 18 hundredths remaining. You see that? All right, so now let's do this last one here. 98 hundredths is already in hundredths, but 7 tenths we need to decompose, convert to hundredths. Yes, 70 hundredths. We're getting good at this. And you add 98 and 70. All right, yeah, it's 168. And one way to do this one is to, just to give you a little more math help here, is to say, oh, if this were 100, it would be 170, but it's going to be two less than 170, 168. Crazy, man. 168 
hundredths. And now I'm going to write 168 such that it ends in the hundredths place. Ones, decimal, loaf of bread, muffin, tenths, hundredths, 168. Ending in the hundredths place is 168 hundredths. I think there's one more. Let's take a look. All right, number five, as you probably smelled it coming around the bend there, yeah, we got ourselves a word problem. So we take what we learned and put it into kind of a real-life application. So Cameron, shout out to all the Camerons out there, measured 65 one-hundredths inch of rainwater on the first day of April. On the second day of April, also known as the next day, he measured 83 one-hundredths inch of rainwater. How many total inches of rainwater did Cameron measure on the first two days of April? I think, like, if you draw the tape on this, you're, you know, you see what you're looking at. All right, so we have 65 hundredths. And then we have, put the line here, 83 hundredths. And the two of them together we'll call R. That's our rain. You see, so we can see we're adding these just by looking at that. So let's go ahead and do that. So 65 hundredths plus 83 hundredths. Well, I, just to make sure we're all clear, we'll, we'll do the addition separately here to make sure we do it correctly. Um, no ticks and ticks and ticks and ticks and ticks and We'll just do the addition. Three and five make eight. Eight and six make 14. 148, and we're talking about what, Ed? We're talking about hundredths, 148 hundredths. And now we're going to write that, and I'm going to do the same thing I did before, and write out the place values. Ones, decimal muffin, tenths, hundredths. So 148, that ends in the hundredths place because it's 148 hundredths. 148 what? Hundredths. So how many inches did he measure? Now, it doesn't tell us to express our answer as a decimal, but that's what we did for all of these. That's why I'm doing that here. So now we just make our little statement. Cameron, budding rain scientist that he is, uh, measured is our verb. One and 48 hundredths inches of rain, rainwater is kind of weird. We don't call it rainwater, we call it rain. Of rain on the two days. And it doesn't matter, you see how they kind of throw you some red herrings, which means, in this case, extraneous information. It doesn't really apply. Um, you know, about what, it's the first and second day of April. It doesn't matter. There's just two consecutive days. It doesn't even matter if they're consecutive. They're just two days. Well, look what you've gone and done, you and Cameron together awesomeness, awesome sauce that you have all over, smeared all over your head. You complete another homework time, so I'll see you again next time. It is, once again, homework time.